It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC South. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it comes your way next. This is the NFL on EA Sports, and you get a look inside a hot and humid Everbank Stadium here in the city of Jacksonville. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. But, Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. But meanwhile, the Titans last year, they were one of those strange statistical anomalies, CD. When you look at their defense, they were the best in football, number one overall against the run, but worst in the league, number 32 against the pass. And part of the reason they were number one against the run, the struggles they had slowing people down through the air so people threw it and threw it and threw it and had great success. And a team that should have been in the playoffs last year somehow managed to miss it. The punter Logan Cook set to start the proceedings and we are underway here in Jacksonville. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Well, the Titans ready to take over on offense for the first time. And it is the now 35-year-old Ryan Tannehill who leads him out in his 12th NFL campaign. Those who expected Ryan Tannehill to go quietly into the night after the Titans drafted Will Levis, well, they clearly don't know this man well at all. He's a fighter and former comeback player of the year and expects to have his best season yet as a pro in this campaign. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. And hold up here, an injured player. And that's quarterback Ryan Tannehill who's shaken up. But hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. A situation they'll certainly want to avoid going forward. An early second and long they're facing. The NFL's leading rusher in 2019 and 2020, Derrick Henry. And down he'll go at the 25. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. Now the pass, and it's into the arms of Hopkins. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. First down, Titans gain of 12. So the completion there, but Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Ball on the 39. Here's second down and seven. Off the option, here's Henry. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Third and two, Willis. Trying to force it to Hopkins, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tyson Campbell, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. 
That right there is the inauspicious start that they were hoping to avoid the turnover on the first possession. I love how you use those college-bound words like that, inauspicious. Well done. I really appreciate that. Thank but you. here's the thing for me. I'm just wondering if their game plan is incorrect. You know, I think they felt like they could come in and throw it around pretty well. That interception early, they may rethink how they go about attacking. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. Arden Key, the ex-LSU Tiger there on the stop. Offensive line really didn't give him any maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Here's second and ten. Now Lawrence. They'll get this one complete to Zane Jones. And he's taken down inside the 30. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Here's Lawrence to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. And remember, this drive started off. Now Mike Vrabel, unsure of that last call. He's going to throw out the red flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. And they'll run with ETN. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. A good run, eight yards there, and it'll be second and goal. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from, from the one. Once more, ETN, and this time he is into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You have three tight ends on the field. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Extra point from McManus is good. And it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. Now remember the last time out, they threw the interception. That led to the touchdown, so now time to regroup. It certainly is, and their goal right now as they go back out on the field, a calming drive, something that takes the ball, keeps it for a while, lets the defense relax a little bit, and lets the offense regain confidence in their game plan. The end result, 21 yards. 
Well, no matter your experience level as a quarterback, you throw an interception on that first drive, maybe a little shaken up. Nice response there to get their first first down. I think you make an excellent point. I don't care who you are. You throw an interception, it's going to get to you a little bit. But the ones that we've seen that are the best, you never notice it. They don't come to the bench, throw their helmets, they don't do any of that. They just go back out the next drive and act like it never happened. And that's what we're seeing here. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From the 41, here's second and five. In motion, left goes Burks. Now they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. And he'll make it only to the 43, a gain of two. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Here's third and three. Now Willis on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Titans first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and... So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Henry on first down, not finding much running room as he pushes forward for a yard or two at most. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. That's complete to Traylon Burks. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. To the air on first down, here's Willis. And a pass complete to Moore. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. And that's how you shake off the interception you threw on the opening drive. Come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. First and 10, Willis. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. He was certainly quick to atone for his early game interception. Instead of making another mistake forcing something, he reset himself and found a lane to pick up the first down. To the air on first down, here's Willis. This is caught. And the Titans are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They want to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit in the first quarter. Now they are set up first and goal. Henry looking for a signal, but none forthcoming. They stopped him shy of the goal line. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Second down, Willis looks to throw here. Dancing to his left. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. The plan was clearly to challenge that by sending a blitz on second down, but even the extra guys couldn't catch him in the backfield, though. He doesn't scramble for a first, but he does get the last lap by evading the blitz and getting beyond the line of scrimmage. Right now, no questioning the toughness of this Jaguar defense. This is third and goal. Titans touchdown. Chris Moore there to make the grab. And the Titans are an extra point away from evening this one up. 
Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads him right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Full connects on the extra point, And we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Open man down field is Ridley. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, he's been a busy man in this first half. They've targeted him quite a bit, including both plays here to start this drive. And until that defense starts reacting a little better, they may just keep going back to him. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. They go play action now. Lawrence. A quick throw there is incomplete. Christian Kirk, the man he was looking for. And now it's second down. Lawrence, now this is ETN on the draw. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville at a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Play action. It's Lawrence. Buying time to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Lawrence. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. First catch for the man who led the Jags in catches a year ago, and it's a Jacksonville first down. Hey, did you have one of those backyards that you had one of those, like, mats or pits like you have for high jumpers? And, you know, you had your friends throw the ball and you tried to make the spectacular catches? I didn't need a mat. <laughs> you, you just did it with the ground? Absolutely. That explains your Concrete. toughness. That <laughs> explains your toughness right there because I think that guy was raised just like you. What a catch. Lawrence now off the bootleg. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Well, the pressure just couldn't get to him that time. They forced him out to his right, but he held his poise, surveyed the field, didn't find anything he liked, and then took off and picked up a nice gain. On second down, a run with ETN. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Now Lawrence. Jacksonville. Christian Kirk on the receiver.
weaving into that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. A diving catch for the score. He laid out. That was special. And you know the first thing they're going to check, right? Did he complete the process of the catch? <laughs> all the way through, all the way to the ground. Ball doesn't hit the ground without control in his hands. All of that, yes. Check the box. Touchdown. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Willis will look to throw on first down. And he is going to go down. He will be sacked on the final play of this first quarter. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. From the gun, here's Willis. This will go to Henry out wide. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Third down, it's Willis. And that is incomplete. He was waving his arms, running the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what did you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. <laughs> cold-blooded. <laughs> A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, and that'll make it third down. Lawrence will throw. He'll air this one out for Kirk. And he bats it away falls down incomplete. I've got a good friend in football always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Now these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, 
the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Now second and five. Second down throw coming by Willis. That'll be complete to Okonkwo. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. First target, first catch, and a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. First down carry for Henry. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now we're at the 41, second and nine. Willis will look to throw it. His throw incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Now come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, it's Willis. A short throw taken in by Conquero. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Zone coverage here defensively. They're going to let their tight end run a drag across the field. This is where a linebacker gets forced to pass him off. That time, the receiver gets lost a little bit, and he's able to make the catch and pick up good yardage and a first down. Now Willis on first and 10. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. First and 10, it's Willis. Escaping the play. And he can't find a receiver He's brought down. Adam Gotsis. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. So the completion good for six yards. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Willis. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 14. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. As the field starts to get condensed, the defense likes that a lot because now you don't have as much space to cover, but a well-run corner route there. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. 46 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. The running game fully in sync, 1-11 to 11 on that play. And sometimes it comes from the offensive coordinator, understanding what he thinks the defense is going to do and dialing up the perfect play. Sometimes the quarterback, though, can look at the defense, realize he needs to change it to a run, and he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Josh Allen gets him for a loss of five. He is so tough to handle on the blitz, and that's exhibit A. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. 
Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left. Look. And he will score! Touchdown, Titans! Derrick Henry! A six-yard touchdown run! And the Titans are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. And each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. Over on the sideline hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. That's going to be caught by Kirk. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Here's Lawrence. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down, although it doesn't appear to be by much. He needed four, and he got four on third down. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Lawrence going to throw again. Complete to Jones. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down and five. Now Lawrence. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 21. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Six. 
On first and ten, it's Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETM. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. It's a throw again is Lawrence. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Third and two, now Lawrence. He's going to have the first down and then so. Touchdown! Evan Ingram from 13 yards out. And the Jaguars have moved out in front. On that third down call, the goal is to get the ball to their tight end and pick up a first down, but he wasn't satisfied with just that. They got the first down. That was the gravy. He decided to take in the whole meal and rumbled in for a touchdown. McManus now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen, put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complementary football and get that passing game going as well. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Willis's throw here into the hands of Moore. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Running from the gun with Henry. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 67 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Another powerful run and another workhorse season in the books for Henry. Let's take a peek at his numbers. He's led the NFL in carries and top 1,500 yards for the third time in four years. In addition, fifth straight year with double-digit touchdowns. On first down, Willis. A check down here for Henry. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. That'll give him eight that time, and it'll be second in a couple. To throw, here's Willis. Over the middle, into the hands of Burks. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Willis looking to throw it. of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Here, 
second down and three. Second down, here's Willis. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Adam Gonsis able to get in there yet again. That's already three sacks for him here in this first half of football. You doing okay over there, partner, because that's yet another sack in this game that you just had to call. We're not even at halftime yet. No wonder this team has the lead. What an effort by the defense right from the word go. The adjustments at halftime, they got to be big for this to really get up in the second half. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. From the right hash, it's a 41-yard attempt. Folks, kick is good, and that'll bring him back within four. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. In the first half, we saw a strong outing from Trevor Lawrence. He fired his guys into the lead with two first half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. Powering his way forward. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 24. Now Lawrence to throw. Open man right side is Ingram. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. Here's the rookie from Auburn, Tate Bigsby. And he's brought down at the 34, call it a gain of four. Here's third and a few inches. They'll run with ETL. This will be a Jaguars first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On first down, right back to ETN. And he stopped immediately there. 
No gain on the play there. Second down. This defense, tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Throw right side caught by Ridley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now, uh, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards, and that'll bring up second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On play action, Lawrence and down he goes. That's Aziz Al-Shair getting through for the sack that time. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That is caught. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 23. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. On first and ten, it's ETN. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to 17. Can't have a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Now second and three. Here's Lawrence to throw. On the slant, he'll get it to Jones. And the Jaguars are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Let's go, baby. Lawrence will throw. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Jaguars take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally the haymaker to put that drive away. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. 
And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now... And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Fortunate to get that football back. It's trailing here in the second half. Last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity, because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. On second down, here's Henry. Shoves him aside. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. 84 yards on the ground for him so far. Well executed there on second down, so do you go back to the air on third? Well, that's a possibility, but now you've opened up things to where you showed that you would run the ball in long distance situation. You might come back again because I doubt they believe you'll do it a second time. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. Caught left side, Hopkins. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be fourth down. A short game that doesn't get on the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fielded at the 20. 51 yards on the punt there. And that will come the offense as they take over. Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars back again. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Play action. It's Lawrence. And a catch made by his tight end, Luke Farrell. First target, first catch, and a first down. Draw play, ETN. They'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. Now a second and six. Now Lawrence. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Here's Lawrence. And this one incomplete. Threw it down at the feet of his receiver. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. Lawrence. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and ten. Again, it's Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. Boy, this has just been an offensive clinic. It's seemingly been one big play after another, after another, and add this one on to the list. When you can bite up more than half the field on one play, <laughs> things are definitely working in your favor. A 
After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Bigsby. We'll get it into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. And this is where you're hoping you can catch the defense with too many men in the box. You line up in a jumbo set and pull people close to the line of scrimmage and in tight. And then it's all about closing off the angles of pursuit on the strong side and hoping your guy can win the race to the outside. And that time, he takes a toss and falls his lead blocker right into the end zone. McManus's point after is good. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Tennessee offense set to go again. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. 90 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the 25, here's second and four. Again, it's Henry. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Tannehill now to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Hopkins. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And from the 41, this is second and a yard. Off play action, Tannehill. And his throw is incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw is Tannehill. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 40. Defense was thinking run, and they're dealt a pass of just under 20 yards. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Throwing again is Tannehill. Throw here taken in by Riley, the tight end. So the completion good for seven there at its second down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. From the 34-yard line here, second and three. Now Tannehill. And the catch made by Hopkins. 90 yards receiving now for him in the ball game. It's a first down. Tannehill. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. 
<laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And they'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. It'll be a pickup of four, and it winds us down to the end of the third quarter. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. So second and goal, and the big man Henry alone in the backfield. They'll give it to him again. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Derrick Henry, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, I think Josh Norman can sympathize. He knows a little something about a run like this from Derrick Henry. I mean, that stiff arm might be the best in the business. Oh, there's no doubt about it. We'll see that Josh Norman play forever and ever, won't we? Because at Derrick Henry's size, 6'3", nearly 250, you know he's not shying away from contact. And here he just kept the defender at arm's length as he barreled his way into the end zone. I mean, just put that arm into the chest. And there he goes. Extra point up and good by Folk. And that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. No return here for Clay Brooks and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives and a two-score lead. I think here now you just, you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. <laughs> I say, run the football, you've got the lead. Well, let's watch it and find out who's right. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Throwing quickly, this is caught by Kirk. And he'll get nothing out of that one. So nothing doing there, and it'll be second down. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. Second and 10. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Now Lawrence to throw. Screenplay, here's ETN. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. A gain of nine, not enough, and it's fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. He's got this complete to Ridley. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A big pickup of 12 yards on fourth down to keep this drive from stalling. On first down, Lawrence. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jones. 
So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. Throwing again here. It's Lawrence. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Slot man moves right. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Now they try to catch him by surprise there on third down, but this defense, they were all over the jet sweep. And it's oftentimes all about what you're doing on the backside of the defense, whether it's the defensive end or the outside backer. Who's setting the edge? And if they don't get blown off the line of scrimmage, they can really wreck a play. And in this case, they were able to make the tackle for a loss as a result. So after five touchdowns offensively, hey, maybe it's time to get the kicker a little work, and he's able to connect there. I love that empathetic side of you. You're worried about him getting some action, getting to be a part of the game. Well, he got in and got it done. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This will go to Henry out wide. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. On second down, here's Tannehill. It's complete, Burks. Tannehill on target to Burks. First down, Tennessee. Here's Tannehill. And his throw is going to be incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. On second and ten, Tannehill. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Henry's got it. Out on the left side. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Jaguars back with it on offense. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. Oh. 
On first and 10, it's Lawrence. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. On play action, Lawrence. He's got his big tight end, Farrell, complete. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville in a first down. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. From the 48-yard line, here's second and two. Running out of the gun with ETM. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Seven yards there and a first down. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Now Lawrence on first down. Finds his tight end Ingram. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Second down and a yard. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. And Kirk is going to have the Jaguars first down as he'll be brought down at the 27. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Quick hands that time to knock that one away. It sure looked like a short touchdown, but able to get a good break on the football and force the incompletion. Now a second and ten. Play action. It's Lawrence. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 25 yards that time. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Here's Lawrence. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. But Brandon, this is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. They'll set up to run the quarterback draw. 
And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. He'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. On third and goal, Lawrence. Touchdown, Jaguars! Zay Jones from six yards away. And the Jaguars have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs, and if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. DeAndre Hopkins and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want. DeAndre Hopkins, he's all alone. Still going inside the 20. Touchdown, Titans. DeAndre Hopkins, 75 yards. And the Titans are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Well, I don't think you can get any more efficient or tidy, whatever word you use in that. And one play, 75 yards, end zone. Yeah, efficient, tidy, excellent words. How about explosive? 75 yards, one play. That means everyone handled their assignment, doesn't it? It doesn't just mean that the defense broke down. They really executed the way that was drawn up on the whiteboard. Big time play, big time result. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. Down the numbers. There he goes. In the fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. On right, first and 10, it's Bigsby. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Decent start defensively to this series. They've got to stop them here and get this ball back. I like the way you phrase that, partner. Decent start, but now it's got to be more about the ball. It's all about the ball, getting it away from them because making good tackles is one thing, but the clock will run out on you. You've got to have the football back for your offense. Straight ahead, ETN. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Like any team, they would have loved to have had more yards on that run, but it looks like they just want to get to the two-minute warning and see what they want to do after that. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. This one caught by Ridley. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Leave it all out. Leave it all out. 
And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So first and 10 now from the 30. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. Here's a second and five. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. And a short gain here, down to the 22. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. ETN on the toss right, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Six yards in the wrong direction that time. Not only that, but it brings up fourth. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature of coaches. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. So that, not just important in the fact that it widens their lead, but really that was a textbook job of just hanging on to the football. And we know all the time that coaches talk about time of possession. Sometimes it's a stat that doesn't matter much, but in this drive, it matters a lot. They want to reduce time and score points and lock this game down. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. I think this is what this game's become now. Just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. Tannehill's throw pulled in by Hopkins. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we can come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty? Yep. Wiley? Oh, definitely. All the veteran names? You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get... Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. Well, this was a fun one today if you like points. A lot of them went on the board. Both offenses were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it. And with frequency. Not fun to be a defensive player, but on the offensive side of the ball, those guys had a blast. One team came away with a bit even better for them. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com.
The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.